Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to episode 32 of the Sharpshooters Podcast. I'm your humble and gracious host, Mr. Brinsky Shaw, aka Mr. B Sharp, on the ones and twos and threes and fours and the fives and six. You already know, we got the guys in the house tonight. But but before I bring them up, uh, we just hit 450. Uh, hopefully, before this drop, we'll be at 460 or higher than that. But appreciate everybody. We're still on the road to 500 subscribers. And appreciate y'all just tuning in and keep on watching uh, these awesome takes by these brothers. But without further ado, my guys in the building, look at them. Main man Tez in here, as always. He got a mic. He got a <laughs> mic. He's been complaining about uh, his, how he sound. He's been sounding great, I don't, but he has a mic. But I still think he sounds the same. But <laughs> No, 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 it sounds better. I ain't going to lie. It does sound a little better. I appreciate but my that. main man, Quint, in the house, ladies and gentlemen, been out. Been running around, but he back this week. I'm glad he's in here this week. What up, dog? What's good? What's good? Hey. But uh, y'all already know where we're going to start with this. Men's Final Four. We just talk about everything that led up to the championship game. Of course, Alabama playing uh, UConn. And then uh, Tennessee, am I, man, am I getting it right? Yeah, Tennessee was playing Purdue. Was Tennessee? Tennessee? No. Oh, hold on, I'm tripping. North Carolina I'm tripping. State. North State. Carolina State. I'm tripping. I'm tripping. Well, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of Elite Eight, bro. I'm, I'm I'm tripping. I'm tripping. But yeah, DJ Barnes going against um uh man, I forgot his name. Edie. Yeah. Edie. And I thought that was gonna be a a great great matchup, bro. Because Barnes is strong and whatnot, but that turned out to be like a runaway game for Purdue for the most part. Yeah. A lot of great shooting. North Carolina State had an awesome run to the Final Four. I mean, an awesome run. Like, nobody seen them even making it that far, let alone the first round. So, that was a great run by them. And, uh, of course, the nightcap was alabama UConn. Mm-hmm. And it lived up to be a great game to a certain point. We was down by four to them guys. And then, like I said, man, we had to have some of the best shooting. And our shots weren't going down at a certain point, and you couldn't got away. Then, of course, that's why you end up being Purdue and UConn in the national championship game. And we seen that UConn took it home. So, what was y'all whole perspective on this Final Four, or it, even the tournament in general for the men? Oh man, it was—I thought it was a great tournament. Uh, honestly, uh, just overall, you got to see some upsets. Uh, my team fell victim to one. <laughs> I'm glad you said that one first. Yeah, I gotta get that out of the way. <laughs> Oh, and I've been waiting to the end of the tournament to say this, but it was only one flagrant two foul call the entire tournament. Only one player got ejected for a flagrant two the entire tournament. And that was Chad Baker Mazzaro for Auburn for an elbow that if you watch the video, it's going, you have to watch it <laughs> 10 times before you even see the elbow. But mm-hmm. that's neither here nor there. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> Let it go, man. It's over. It's over. They still should have won. They should have. I'm not saying that's the reason they lost, but I'm just oh, saying. okay. I got you. Somebody else, if, if that was if that deserved him getting kicked out, then somebody else surely should have been kicked out of this tournament. But I ain't gonna go in there. But it's final four. Uh, the Alabama UConn game was entertaining uh, uh, as we knew it was, would be. You got Alabama high powered offense uh, against UConn, who as a team has been playing. Excellent basketball all tournament. If you've been watching them play, they've been playing amazing basketball as a team all tournament. And uh, watch that game. Uh, Alabama just couldn't 
they started off strong, but then later in the game, they couldn't find scoring. For real, for real. Uh, when you look at UConn, they had like five or six players and double figures. So they, it was equal opportunity. They were spreading around. Uh, and uh, it just kind of caught up to Alabama in the end. Oh, I thought they played a great game, man. I thought they had one hell of a run in tournament. Can't take nothing from them. Uh, that was another low-scoring game for them. They defended well, I thought. That, you know, I mean, if I, t- I think what, what was the score, like 60-something? It was like 50-something to 62 or something like that. They had like 60-something points. Mm-hmm. The Alabama holds you to 60-something points, and then you think they usually win that game. So defensively, you know, they 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 definitely stepped it up this tournament. It just wasn't enough to beat uh what what now we know is a great team. We kind of knew it before, but yeah, it's solidified now. Uh without a doubt. <laughs> yeah, on the on the other end, I was I wanted to see the DJ Burns matchup versus Edie. Uh it was subpar. Uh they, they clearly had a plan that they was gonna run uh DJ Barnes the whole game. And you saw him go to the bench a couple times. Uh, it's the other DJ, I think his name DJ Horn. Mm-hmm. I want to say he he had a great game. You know he 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 been playing well all tournament. Just as a team, North Carolina State man. Listen, whenever you had two teams, men and women, in the tournament, they play basketball down there. Yeah, North Carolina State has established themselves as a school where you can go to and. No matter you're a man or woman, and y'all can make a tournament run. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. yep. Expect them to start getting some top tier talent, uh, maybe here soon. Then, then what makes it so cool that um, only other time you really see it happen is you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how rare it is. So, That's yeah. rare. Yeah. Uh, but they play, you know, North Carolina State basketball just wasn't enough to beat uh, Purdue, who. Uh, I don't know. In that game, I think DJ Burns had like what eight points. So he clearly, uh, when you start talking about him going to the next level, you see it's probably a cap on that, unless he, you know, lose some weight maybe. Well, uh, he, well, he was in foul trouble. To be fair, that's true. He he, he was trying to guard Edie, who's a guy that normally live uh, at the whole fouls in. <laughs> In a season, like yeah. by, by a wide march, but right. it, it just it just wasn't enough, man. You had yeah. those two couple two pieces, those couple pieces for North Carolina State, and it, it just wasn't enough to overcome a great player and a great team. Uh, right. and then in the finals, man, I saw a team beat a great player, we, and we, we actually saw that in both finals. The exact same thing happened. So this man put up thirty seven points. I think the next closest person to him had twelve. Uh, so. It, it was him versus uh, UConn, who again had five, six players in double figures, and it's going to be tough for you to win a basketball game uh, against a team where, you know, you got five players putting up double figures. And uh, man, after that game, uh, they coach Hurley. He made some bold statements, bro. He, he said it all. Like, <laughs> even before the game, even last year, when he said, hey, y'all, they lost to Villanova. He said, y'all better get us now. Y'all better get us now. Uh, he wasn't lying, bro, because he got that team running like a well or machine. Yep. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I love it when coaches talk like that and back it up, man. And he, man, he, he is backing it up. There's nothing you can say to him about that. There's, mm-hmm. there's not a coach currently coaching that can say anything about Hurley in the way mm-hmm. he's coaching basketball at UConn because he got the mm-hmm. boys back-to-back national championships. And uh, – they're probably gonna come out as the favorite to win it again next year. Yeah, I mean, but yeah. Overall, it's a good final four. That's that's pretty much all I saw. I agree with everything you said, bro. Everything. I would have to say though, in addition to that, UConn, UConn has just been a beast. You know, they just they just develop. They just have a good good pedigree, a good team. Like they they just been like that. Um, uh, going to the Alabama versus um, UConn game, man, Alabama put up way better defense than Purdue. <laughs> to me, just in my opinion. And yeah. Everybody can say that. There ain't no opinion. That's facts. Man, yeah. facts. Right. So, I'm just saying, man, I feel like UConn, 
and this was kind of I noticed throughout the whole March Madness, man. UConn is a second half team. They are a second half team. It's like they run with you, you play with you at first, and then they just take off. <laughs> every every single game they did the same thing. They just take off. Um, uh, what's his name? Um, Edie. Uh, on the other side, Edie and Burns. I thought that was going to be a great matchup too. Um, just reason why, because of Burns' size and, uh, of course, Edie's height. Uh, yeah. Burns made some tough plays. He really did. Um, he had to. He had to bang against him. Uh, but, yeah, it was kind of flopsided, man. You could you could just tell it was flopsided, man. Once they got the ball running, they kept they kept the foot on the gas, man, and they never looked back. Um, when it comes to the championship game, oh man, you you could like at, at some point a kid could read those plays that Pardue was <laughs> going to do. They said, I, I literally, literally, I I know. I know for a fact my little cousin, he's 13. He, he would have been like, oh, they're going to pass him the ball every time. <laughs> every time in the middle. But in the middle. But um, today, but today, 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 see, uh, I get, I, without a doubt, that was, that was that's exactly what happened. But right. the only thing, only thing I'll say to that is that that was their plan. That was UConn's plan. Yeah. We'll let him go off. Yeah. Right? But we're going to guard these uh, perimeter players. That's right. how you play that, and that's how you play good uh, a team with one main star. Yeah, like that's how you you got to play a team like that. Let let him work. He's gonna go off. Let him do whatever he do, but still put some defense on him. Yeah. But and then he shooting let's, two let's, points. Let's, let's eliminate his help. Once mm-hmm. they eliminated everybody else, it was a wrap. I, I thought the point guard was gonna take off because you saw the spurts where he was doing his thing, but. And like I said, that put back, that put back was, I, I ain't going to lie, that was a nice put back. I can't even lie. But even I posted it on the uh, pod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a nice put back. It's just, man, they, they kept their foot on the gas too. Like I, mm-hmm. like, they, like I said, they're a se- second half team. And once once they got to that point, because they was down, I think it was 30 to 36, right? At the half. Yeah, like that, yep. Yeah, once they got to, once they got back in, it was all she wrote from there. But phenomenal job, to UConn man. They they got a good team. They got good culture there. They got a good good dynamic, and they're gonna continue to roll with it. And the coach, if he wins another one, shoot, he can talk all the stuff he wants to. Then man, he he can talk it down, bro. Cause you go back yeah, to back, bro. That's that's so rare. I'm yeah, just saying. That. That three yeah. in a row, that three in a row. Oh yeah, you feel me? Like you know, you 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 in a row, very very rare in a row. So yeah. with that being said, I think Florida, Florida, oh Florida did two years in a row, but yeah. uh yeah. yeah, yeah. But but the but the difference between them, they brought back their whole roster. He didn't bring it back. He lost like a lot of bit players to the uh, NBA. But that, like I said, that's the culture. That's that's yep. UConn's culture. Just like, just like in the NBA, I always say Heat, uh, Miami Heat, got the best culture. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. But they got a playoff switch for sure now. Yeah, playoff switch. All right. And then the one thing, bro, Dan Hurley really was like in the shadow of his dad and brother for yeah. all pretty much his whole life. Dad yeah. being a, a legendary coach yep. in uh New Jersey, winning all these uh national championships and state championships, like legendary coach, uh uh Bob Hurley Sr. And then his older brother, Bobby, who's a legendary college basketball player at Duke, winning back to back. And he's a coach in uh college, but I'm so glad that he it's like he found his niche, man. And just to see him go back to back, and then not only do he go back to back, the craziest stat that I think I've seen is that out of the 12 NCAA games that they played for the past um, two years, 
Yeah. All of them been double digits. Literally every last one. That means they were not close in none of their games. And I was like, yep. bro, that is very, very impressive. Like, it has never been done before. That is, I am highly impressed with what he did and just, like, the game plan was just top tier. Man, I, I, I ain't going to lie, bro. That was one of the most impressive coaching jobs I have seen in a long time. That yeah. is coaching. And to see him, like, just get his mark on this, like, he, he is his own person. Like, he always been, of course, everybody's their own person. But they'll be like, oh, that's just uh, Bob's son or that's Bobby's little brother. But now it's like, that's Dan Hurley over there. Now he's putting himself right. in rare air with the uh, the Mike Krzyzewski's, the uh, John Woodens, the uh, John Thompson's. Mm-hmm. Them big time names, the right. Roy Williams. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just happy for him, man. And yeah. ain't no telling where they're gonna go uh, in the future. But this is I, I, the only thing I wish that the Final Four, well, the championship game, they ain't start the game in the, at nine thirty. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was late. So late. Yeah, it the was ratings late. Went out the roof. Yeah, yeah. For, that just shows you like the ratings. Like, the women had the higher ratings this year, which we're going to talk about in a minute. But the men, like, you didn't start so late. Of course, the ratings would have been up for the guys. But it was overall, it was a great game. I don't know. I don't yeah. think so, man. I don't, I don't think the ratings would have been as nearly as high as the females, or female ratings were. I, don't, I, I just don't think that, even if it was early. I don't think this year it would have been. Yeah, it would have been closer. It definitely would have been. It was too much surround. Now I'm yeah, with yeah, y'all on. It, so. it possibly could have been, but I don't see it happening because mm-hmm. of one player on the women's side, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. Man, but, uh, you are talking about uh about Hurley and, and and like the pressure he facing in his own family. Man, mm-hmm. think about think about the school. You mm-hmm. could like. Come on, Jim Calhoun and Ollie. Like that is, <laughs> it, it, you, you there's it's literally he took over that's, a program where people would say, "Hey, you can't do nothing but mess this up." Like, what else yeah. could you do? And he comes back, comes in, and wins yeah, back to yeah. back national championships, right? And he yeah. does it after telling people, "Y'all better catch us now." <laughs> that that and that's what I'm saying, bro. That you want your, I want my coach to have that type that of confidence. confidence. Oh yeah, yeah that confidence. I want him to look at you and like, bro, we come. What you gonna do? Like, what you gonna do? I'm here. Right. And, but the thing is, bro, if anything ain't solidified anything, that uh, UConn is a blue blood when it comes to college basketball. If sure. anything, last night, if it it probably already was, I more than likely would have said it was. But if anybody question, like, you know, when you like in sports. Like, of course, in uh, football, when you hear, like, the Blue Bloods, you hear, like, the Ohio States, the Alabama, the Oklahomas, the USC's, the Notre Dame. Basketball, you got your UCLA's, you got Kentucky, you got your Dudes, you got your North Carolinas, your Blue Bloods. North mm-hmm. Carolina, not North Carolina, UConn is in that category. Oh, for sure. With them, without they, a doubt, they, and they're they not going there. nowhere. Yeah, they've been there. Yeah, that, it, I, I, that's why I said I would have said that, and you would have said that clearly. Yeah. So yeah, if you're but a top it's, prospect, it's without a doubt, if you're a top prospect with some talent, and your goal is to win a NCAA championship, I don't know why you don't look at UConn as a top choice. Without a yeah. doubt, and yeah, look at yeah, UConn and Duke. To be honest, it, it and it's been like UConn has proven this their success through different coaches. In a mm-hmm. short period, a relatively short period of time, yeah. Uh, those other schools, you start talking about like North Carolina and, and, and Duke. Once they had coaching changes, we hadn't seen the success from them yet. You know, I'm not saying that they can't, yeah. But you know, they they got rid of some legendary coaches, man, and, and, and we really, hadn't seen yeah. success from them yet. Yeah, they did. They did. But they it seemed like now, whoever you can put up there. For one, nah, they make nah, great. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> they make great coaching who, hires. <laughs> it ain't, yeah, it ain't about who you put up there now. Yeah, that's true. It and ain't the thing about it too is I'm, like they have, you know, 
all them schools we just named, they got high standards when it comes to coaches, right? Right. Mm-hmm. UConn coach just met those standards, and he's going to exceed those standards. I, I look at it like that. You you think he stayed there or the NBA come knocking? You know they like to steal those college coaches when he they ain't go right? He, he ain't. I don't think he's gonna do it though. I don't think so. Yeah, they, bro, they were just talking about him for the uh coaching uh job in Kentucky. He ain't even about to take that. They right. about to be uh Bryce Drew that uh take that job. Yeah, shout right. out to uh Self Davis of CBS Sports for putting out that. One of my favorite guys on college sports. Well, college hoops. Give you some of the best insight. But, yeah, they looking at Bryce uh, Drew for that job. Okay. But, overall, great Final Four for the men. Alabama went as far. I ain't going to lie to you, bro. Some folks tried to clown Alabama fans, but I'm I'm telling you, it didn't work. Because we about as shocked as everybody else. Just the simple fact that we made it this far, so it was like we could have lost by fifty. It still yeah. didn't matter. Just the simple play, fact they played well, bro. Like I, I can't hate on them. Like I, if you watching the games and you you like basketball and you watch them play, like man, you I think they, 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 they were a sleeper team. They were a sleeper team because a lot of people yeah, didn't really want them in. So I mean, and then I would like yeah. to uh, point out. I call majority of the final four for the men besides North Carolina State. Mm-hmm. Now, Alabama thing, that's just me being a biased fan. But <laughs> I did have them losing to UConn. It was sad for me to push that button to be like, damn it. Yeah. I was saying, like, yeah, we, bro, I kept saying the same thing, bro. I like, we had to shoot good. We had to limit our turnovers and play great defense. That's the only way we're going to beat these guys. That's the only way. Right. right. I, I already knew how UConn was, bro. I just knew that how superior they was. Man, Man. I'm, when I'm watching this, one of the things that stood out to me, too, is like out of all of the uh, – out of all the teams in the final four, UConn was the only one that was like running offense. When you talk about the second half of those games, you saw them start to run half court offense, back screens, yep. pin downs. Like they was doing. They running that Euro- European offense, man, with yeah. making them cuts. Like them yeah. cuts are so precise, dog. Like them passes, like, ooh. You could tell they had been there before. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? It, they looked like a championship team. They did, and I wanted everybody to uh send in. I can't remember the Haven piece. I I forgot to put it on my uh, paper. I but Quinn it. had NC State being Purdue, but he had UConn in there yeah. for the championship. Had them boys in there for the championship game. I already know he who he would have said. Now, I should have asked you who you gonna pick for the championship game, but I think he would have said UConn. Yeah, you're right. But, but shout out to the man, appreciate it. See y'all next season. But one of the main courses, the mm-hmm. women final four. Go when I say, and I only want to start there at the final four before we like really get into the final four. The one thing I could not stand <laughs> that, that led up to the uh, final four with Iowa. Making it was the Iowa and UConn game, and clearly nobody knows what a moving screen is. <laughs> I don't know how is that possible. I don't know if you've seen it, Quinn. Did you? Yeah, I, I, I saw that screen, man. And they call it. I, I, uh, I will say this: I understand why folks do not want that to be called, and the I reason why that. I can understand why folks don't want it to be called because it's not because their team is the one getting the call though. Right. But I guarantee you, if it was reversed, you yeah. would hear so much outcry over that. You no, wouldn't no, no. let alone anything. They probably, right. they probably would have been the same amount of outcry, too. To I don't honest, know about the same amount of outcry. Like, especially if it was Caitlin Clark and she tried to run through the, uh, a moving screen. They, they would have been some outroar against that. It would have. It no, definitely would have. No, I'm saying, if she was the one uh, in paid – Page position about to take the shot, but they call an offensive foul. You think they're gonna have that same type of energy for Iowa? I think so. 
I think so. I, I highly disagree the with you. Why I say, the only reason why I say that is because look who Caitlin Clark is. Clayton Clark to the to the women's sport. Everybody tuned into women's sports this year because of her. And so yeah. A lot of people don't even wa- haven't watched the game before this year. And so, you know, they were looking at Caitlin Clark and if they saw that call, they would have been like, they would have been like, man, y'all messed up. Caitlin should have been in the championship. What happened? Y'all wrong call, wrong, wrong. That wasn't the call. That wasn't the call. They would have, they would have, just because of who she is in the women's college basketball. Yeah, now I understand that who she is, but bro, you can literally see it on social media, like how some people just have this fake uh care. I don't know, man. It's just this unnecessary hate for her. It's weird. Which I don't understand. It may well, we we understand. Matter of fact, let's just let go ahead and say what it is. Because she's white. Exactly. If Ellen Clark was black, it wouldn't be she would be treated may should be treated bigger than Angel Reese. Yeah. 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 Maybe. Right. I don't know. But they just don't like this white girl. Just doing up folks. I'm sorry, bro. The girl can hoop. When I watch basketball, bro, I just watch basketball. I don't care who's the best out there. If it's exactly. Luca, Giannis, or whoever, bro. Like, let's let, I watch basketball. Just because she's white, I get it. I, I like, bro. I get it. If anybody yeah. think like, in my eyes, if anybody say, "Oh, it ain't because she white," because, bro, she doesn't do anything. Like, yeah. bro, she doesn't. She doesn't. Uh, it's, like when the game over, she shake your hand and all that. She just bro. going about her business. It's she's a couple like, things though. Like, it's like not only is she white, but she had. Well, I ain't gonna say she had a beef because they probably best of friends off this. But yeah. she had right. a back and forth with. The the black the black female athlete in college that everybody gravitated toward. <laughs> and you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. If, but if why it wasn't they for that, if they if they don't go if they don't have that back and forth, I don't think people are paying Caitlin that much attention. For real, for real. Other than people who just like watch basketball, but like all these randoms that's just coming in here just to hate. Well, but yeah. that's, that's like that's people were literally is. watching this game to see her lose. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that, but that's what I'm saying, bro. Like nobody was watching. Like they was watching Caitlyn, but yeah. it grew. It grew bigger because you have all these folks. The haters came. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when, when, when the Angel Reese stuff happened. Yeah. yeah, bro. And so it just like matter of fact, I'm tripping. I I am tripping. That was the final four. Mm-hmm. UConn and uh, yeah, UConn, yeah, yeah, UConn and uh, Iowa. For the uh champ going to the championship game, yeah, but yeah, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm tripping. That why I, I, I don't know why I keep trying to put that in like elite eight, but they play LSU, right? Yeah. And I'm just like, bro, the girl is a baller, dog. I don't, I don't know what else to say. She like she can just who I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't even know. People even like for real hated her. I'm <laughs> like for real, like I didn't know that because I, yeah, I honestly, okay. a it's, lot of people out here and a lot of people like I know, like see, they love Caitlyn. They love. Well, you gotta stuff. understand where you at, man. Yeah. No, I'm just you saying, gotta, like even the people I follow on social media, like people from back mm-hmm. home, like they love Caitlyn. Like they say she a baller. She 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 doing her thing. But yeah, thank if, God. If, my if you hating on this girl just because she's white. That's, that's crazy. Why? She she's a baller. She can shoot threes. And and to be honest with you, she got so more, so much, much, so more, much, much more to her game than just threes. Right. And and we just highlight the threes because oh, she was shooting them back to back. She got that forty point game. This, that, and third. Yeah, but her package is her, back, her package is nice. Yeah, she'll, she'll probably get you eight rebounds and 12 assists like yeah. it ain't nothing, dog. Right. I'm like a baller, dog. And, yeah. and she, she'll bang in the, in the mid range, too. Yeah. Like, like, she don't like, apologize about it, too. Yeah, it, it was just because it was UConn, man. Another blue blood, and when it comes to women, so they, they, they're literally the standard that that game, bro. I think Paige 
had the best take after the game in her press conference. She was just straight like she straight up said like everybody want to gonna go back and forth about one call, but one call does not win a game. And all you know, the like we missed free throws. We we you know what I'm saying. We did all these other little things to, to gave up a twelve position. point lead. Right. So that's why I'm right. like, I get what people saying. Like I get the point of you don't want to call that right then. I even put it on what's the name like when it happened. Like damn, you can't call that right then. But the reason I say you can't call that right then is because it's a it's definitely a foul for sure. Not only was she moving, but she extended the elbow too. Like she, it was definitely a foul. But if you call that, there's so much other things that they let slide other than that one call. And I yeah. think that's why it caught people off guard. It's like, dang, you letting them, you really letting them play, and they all on the ground, and you letting. Them I get it. Up. There I were missed calls it. on both sides. Now, yeah, people trying to say it, yeah. like it was one sided, but no, yeah. I get literally, it. Literally, right before that. It was a play at half court. Paige pushed this girl in the back, <laughs> mm-hmm. and the ball went to the back court. She picked it up. They didn't call that file on Paige. They didn't call nothing. They didn't yeah. call nothing. So, like, it was bad calls on both sides, and it's just like, for you to call that then after you just didn't let all of this go was just kind of out of place. But a file is a file, man. She filed a girl. Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. and that's what I'm saying, bro. It was just weird to just see – like folks complain about, it. I'm like, bro, if I can under see, like I said, I can understand why you don't want it to be called. Mm-hmm. But it's another thing when you try to tell me a person that know the game very well, and I know y'all know the game and many of us that they telling me that wasn't no foul. I'm like, bro, that is a moving screen. That was yeah. a moving screen like I have never seen before. Right. Like yeah. this girl was nowhere near set. I'm yeah, like, I don't want to call. of course, nobody wants the referee to call it, but if that was your team, then they is. got away with it, and then you'll be complaining. Ma, that was a foul. Like, so you can't please nobody either way, bro. I'm sorry, yeah. it hurts. On, top, on yeah. top of all of that, bro, the game was not over. It was and the game he went to the free throw line, missed the front end of that one and one, or was it the second one? I think it was, it was the second, second free throw. It was the second one. And you let Iowa get the rebound. And you know in that situation that if they get the rebound, this game is over. And you have the bigger the players. You have right. the bigger – like you have the they bigger decide. players. Yeah, you got the size advantage. Like that's play to the whistle. What was, the name? What was the name? What was the name? Edwards. Yeah, Leah. Leah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Was she was banging. Yeah, there was, was I don't know how she didn't get that rebound. rebound. But that's what know. it's so important about bossing out, bro. It's like yeah. it, it's so simple. It's like yeah. this is like fundamental one on one. Like, come on, bro. This, just do this. We get the ball. Time out. Now yeah, all we now we got time. They're gonna advance the ball down the court. We have probably like I'll just say ten seconds on the clock at the most. Yeah, you can get a three or two. We can go for the win, we can go for the tie. Yep. It was not over. It was not and over. They, so they had opportunities to win it, but they they got it's their fault. Yeah. So to but be, shout out to uh to the GOAT, Gino Oriama. Um, they, I'll just I'll just add to that too, though. Um, just looking at that game in general, man. If you kind of would have played the way they did in their first half against uh Caitlin. Like right. eliminate a elimin, elimin, kind of like what we were saying. If you eliminate everybody else except for the star player, let her let her shoot, it would have been a different story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, they well they did a so great cool. job. They did a uh, uh, great job on the uh, Gardner dog, but yeah. it was just like the players stepped up though. Yeah, that it, was it, the only problem. Like we we got the star. I felt like it's different from like Purdue. And uh, Iowa, those are d- two different situations. If you stop her, you stop them, which I totally believe. No, nah, I think I think you could have stopped them if you was because the center, the center had t- what twenty some points. Yeah, like, but a lot yeah, of that, but, but a lot of that saying, is because they, she the wasn't doing that. Like this is like her best game. She has not been doing that all year. Yeah. That was like, 
I didn't see how that got better. Oh, like, uh, that, uh, yeah, but all, to my point about it's kind of equivalent to Purdue. Purdue, if you would have eliminated them to stop them from scoring, yeah, yeah, Caitlin would have scored. She would, she would have did her thing, but she wouldn't have made it enough to where yeah. it was. Is, yeah, her, the, the reason her teammate, why her teammates stepped up. They did. The reason why that's tough, man, mm-hmm. is because she literally makes them better, and like, yeah. If you allow her, to, you say, okay, I'm going to eliminate everybody else, and, and you allow her to go off, she can beat you by herself. Like, she can win these games by herself. They only mm-hmm. lost five games this year, and she's been, you know, the high point scorer in almost yeah. all of them. She can beat you by herself. When you don't mm-hmm. do that, you allow these other – she was spoon-feeding the bigs. Like, those assists, whatever her assist totals were, Mm-hmm. Were probably bigger than the points because she <laughs> I mean, got points out of them bigs that was just and she would, and she would have yeah. had more if they were making them. Yeah, making all it, was, of them. it was like man, some of the passes that she was throwing was like yeah, man, she was, was throwing the ball. It was like it was almost like she was trying to throw the ball in cover two uh, over the line back <laughs> under the safety, like for real, like she was anticipating yeah. these running lanes, and it was man, it's a tough ask. That's why I tweeted, I'm not tweeted, but put on Facebook during the game, like, man, Lisa Boulder is coaching because what she got out of them other players, bro, and her her strategies going into these games yeah. was, I thought was elite. Yeah. I, I thought, yeah. Even the UConn game, I thought that, yeah. I, I, I didn't see nothing wrong with her game plan at all. And uh, just for her to get Points like yeah. Anna Stokey and all them other girls, man. It's just like that. It's tough when they making shots like that. When they making them timely shots, it's tough to say, "All right, we gonna take everybody else away and we gonna let her get hers." And it's like, nah, but they still making point. They still making shots, and she's still great. Like you, know, she's still great. She's still great. So she even made her, created her own shots. You know, yeah, feel, she, yeah, she was. Um, it's a yeah, tough like, but like I said, yeah, she she do got a. A different package to the game. I just think, I just think for that particular game, they should have came up with a better scheme uh, yeah. uh, to handle those other players because those other players stepped up tremendously in a, in a good way. Because uh, what's her name, Mac? Um, uh, can't think of white girl name, but she was in she was, um, Iowa or Iowa, Iowa. I think a lot of name Mac. You probably talking about Martin. Martin, Martin. Yeah, Martin, Martin. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. Yeah. She she started hooping. She just came to life. She, yeah. <laughs> in, that, in that uh second half, you was like, dang, I ain't even got a guard. <laughs> uh Caitlin, no, I need to guard Martin. That's how she was playing. She was like going down. Oh, oh yeah, bro. She was yeah. she was going down the court ridiculous, man. Oh my but, god, bro. I mean <laughs> some of the best moves, yeah. but I ain't gonna lie, Paige, Paige, Paige show. We had to remind folks, like, yeah, I'm that girl too. Right. So it ain't yeah. like she wasn't like the stars lived up to the building. That why that was why the gains in the race was so high because like the stars became the stars. <laughs> right. Like I had to tell a, a classmate, me and uh uh quick classmate Carlos. Wow, like Carlos we man, Carlos was saying, shout out to Carlos, man. But Carlos was like um, in the LSU and Iowa game, like, well, they go to the Ravens right there with Juju and them not there. I like, boy, you crazy if you yeah. think the Ravens going anywhere because this girl is still here. Right. Next game, her and Paige break a record. The yeah. next game after that, break, break a, a record. Break a record. <laughs> I'm like, bro, this girl is box office, man. Whether yeah. you like it or not, bro, she is box office. Yeah, she's gonna tra- she's gonna translate well in in the WNBA, bro. I, I feel mm. like she is. I think so. I, I think, think so. that game is gonna translate well in the WNBA. I just yeah. You saw those comments uh by uh, what's her name Sue and uh, Tarazi. Tarazi. Oh, no, we gonna get to that. We gonna get. Yeah, <laughs> we gonna get to that too. But we were talk shortly on the South Carolina game. Uh, NC State. They did exactly what I thought they were gonna do. Yeah. Load them out, yeah. but the thing was, I'm like South Carolina was my pit day one because 
Um, last year they should have won, won it all. But guess who they went against? They went against Caitlin. But she had to have an all time game to beat them. Right. And they right. were stronger last year. And that's the crazy right. thing, in my opinion. They were stronger last year with a little Boston leading the show. And if LSU seen South Carolina again, a little Boston on Angel Reeves, that would have been a tragedy again because. If you seen they play, seen them play early in that year, it was just like, yeah, Angel got to step her game up. Like she does good when it's like, I just need Angel to step up her game. But shout out to her. She will. But, she uh, will. Yeah, she 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 got. I feel like she's gonna have a long role in the uh, WNBA if she doesn't get a uh, get a mid range shot or something because. You're not going to be banging with them girls down there. But uh, that was I said. South Carolina handled their job against uh, NC State. Yeah. But that championship game. Now, unfortunately, I have to admit this. I slept through the whole national championship <laughs> game. Oh, I man. woke up at 4 o'clock. That morning, I don't know, I forgot why, and I was up, and I was like, okay, I'm going to take a small little nap and then watch the game. Slept through the whole game, woke <laughs> up to South Carolina, so I had to go back and watch the game. Thank God I recorded it. Didn't know Caitlin just went off in the first quarter. Yeah. And just went bonkers. But this is where coaching comes in. Mm-hmm. Done. And this is when coaching comes in, when talent comes in, which a lot of folks don't understand. Right. You have Raven Johnson. Play and right. Dunn put her on Caitlin. Right. You stay on her for the rest of the game. Right. And it slowed her down a whole lot because Caitlin is literally them or bus. Like we will, these other girls we can control. This is different when you have uh Kaylin Clark one five star against South Carolina that probably got like 10 of them. Right. <laughs> five stars. And it showed in that game, bro. Like we can we we're not worried about these girls. We can out rebound them, we can outscore them, we can do whatever we want. We just have to slow down her. And right. Raven Jones did an awesome job, a tremendous job. Uh 2009, Darrell Reeves. Job that's how good of a job she did. She did so her. definitely she deserves so much credit. And just a simple fact, just to watch uh Dunn uh Dunn Staley just get her third one and to get it on the undefeated season. As like I said, as a lifelong Dunn Staley fan, the only woman's jersey I have ever owned is Dunn Staley's USA jersey. That's how much I love her. I wish I could find that picture because I don't have that jersey. I have no idea what that jersey is. But Damn. shout out to her, man. What was y'all thoughts on the game? And or just what you thought about it? just anything. Um great game, man. Great game. Uh uh so I where they couldn't. This is one game where they couldn't survive getting beat on the glass like that. Uh, those bigs, they really played well. Cardosa, shout out to her. She came in, played her role, and, and, and did it very well. Um, Camilla. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. And then, to your point about Raven being on Caitlin, what was great about it and what was so good about the coaching aspect of, of it, during the first half and some of the third, she was really kind of rotating people in there on, on, on Caitlin a bit. Raven was the primary defender, but every now and then she throw another defender in there, um, likely to keep Raven out of foul trouble so that she can be on her late in the game. Um, she didn't have to worry about that. And just to throw different bodies at her. You know, mm-hmm. she still came up with 30 points. I mean, but 30 from her versus 40, I mean, I take that any any day of the week. You know, mm-hmm. um, I thought it was a good coaching effort again by Lisa Boulder. Uh, she found unlikely points out of 
out of seemingly nowhere, you know. Uh, South Carolina did get a little sloppy. They had a few turnovers. Uh, they didn't they didn't shoot well from the line. They just kept missing free throws. Mm-hmm. Uh, or this game would have been out of hand a lot earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, but man, shout out to Dunn. It was gonna be history made no matter who won this game, you know. Uh and, and shout out to Dunn. So I, I just want to say shout out to Dunn Staley and having this undefeated season. And nobody really recognizing what was happening. Like this is a story of an undefeated team that that went under the radar because of all the other storylines that was happening in, oh, in women's college basketball. Like people man. were talking about everything else, but you got this undefeated team sitting here. So it wasn't shocking to see them come out and win. Um, shout out to Caitlin, man. She came out. She did her thing. Uh, but, you know, they, 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 they had a game plan for her. it worked. Uh, and, and it took an undefeated team to beat them, you know, to eliminate, to keep her from the championship, you know. No. So, I, I, I don't know. It was it was just as entertaining as I thought, like, mm-hmm. thought it would be. You ain't lying. Hey, I think everybody going to say the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Iowa. Iowa, man, <laughs> they actually – they had a good run, man. They had a good run. Kaylin Clark had a good run. She's a baller. You know, that's that's undeniable. We we can say that right now. She's a baller. And she's going to be a baller in the WNBA. South Carolina came prepared. <laughs> they really did. Don Staley, she, does, she did her homework. She said, last year, we coming back. We going back. We going to win it all. Uh, Don Staley... You know, you know, one of those things uh, when, when they say when you surround yourself with excellence, excellence right. just happens, right? True. My statement was excellent. You know, oh, she was yeah. excellent. Um, and she produces excellent. And to be honest with you, you know, we, we earlier you said, uh, Brinsky, um, about those bluebird team, blue blood teams. South Carolina's about to be a blue blood team. I, I just feel it in my heart. They about to be a blue blood, blue blood team for real. Mm-hmm. Um, they made their statement. They came out swinging. I, I love the pressure that uh, Camilla played. Um, but she she's a remarkable player, man. I I can't say nothing nothing bad about her, man. She's a remarkable player, man, and she's gonna translate well too. I just oh, yeah. wanna, I want to see yeah. Don Staley. To be honest with you, I feel like many more championships are coming their way. True. Yeah. Many more. Many more. Many. I, I, and to be honest with you, I wouldn't even be shocked. And I'm and I'm gonna put this on the record. I got them winning it next year too. Oh yeah, yeah, this bro. Is, they, is, they they and the crazy thing is, yes, they losing uh, Camilla, but I think. Uh, Look at the bench. It's full of freshmen, though. <laughs> full of freshmen. Full of freshmen. And right. then it, it ain't like it's just any type of freshman. We got like five stars, like uh, uh, for Wally, uh, which is definitely mm-hmm. going to start next year, right? And she's going to be a sophomore. Then you have uh, I forgot her name. I think her name Ray Howard. She the number two uh player in the country for the women. She can ball too. She's a, uh, I think she's a Ford. Ford. She's a power Ford. She can ball too. So, man, this train ain't stopping no time soon. No. no. I, I will no. say, I, I, I just appreciate that. Uh, during the championship, it had some good coaching. It was some good coaching, you know. It wasn't just relied relied upon just the players. Like it was some good coaching in that game. Don Staley, um, and Lisa. Like it was some. Yeah. It, it was. I. Yeah. I'm gonna say. Man, I tell you this though. You come. You come home and play Duke. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's that's they may have made a run. Well, they may have gotten past Iowa and been in this championship game. 
Yeah. They literally only had six people playing. Hey, they had them freshmen though. Them freshmen. Yeah, yeah like two or three play, players players yeah. playing the entire game. Uh because oh. of injury. So yeah. next year, uh, I'm looking to see that UConn South Carolina matchup. I don't know if they play in the regular season, but it's gonna be I I I, I assume they're gonna have more depth next year than they did. Yeah, because they're gonna have uh they got a number one player coming in. Like UConn always gonna be UConn. I yeah. I feel like they been a little off last few years, but Oh, they got some uh people coming in right now. Yeah, like it's a big possibility that they can be like one of their biggest threats to that championship from from them repeating. So yeah. it's it's a, it's a big possibility. And one thing that I really want to say is that I'm glad. Like it takes people like Don to just like realize the moment, though. Like, yes, yeah, South Carolina won the national championship. But she realized, like, Kaylin is a big part of this game growing the way it is. Like, a lot of people watch this game in the appreciation that she had, that she has for her. And then in knowledge, what a lot of people uh, hated to admit and didn't want to say, like, she is one of the goats of this game. Just to admit, like, if she would have won this game, like, she would have won this game. Yeah. To this team, bro, she's on that Mount Rushmore. It would be very, very hard to leave her off. Like, I'm it ain't even like you are one of the ghosts. Like, mm-hmm. I, I still believe like to like be on that Mount Rushmore, you have to have a championship. But she is definitely one of the greatest uh women college basketball players to ever live. Right. There's no denying it. I'm like people saying that oh she lost to Angel Reese and she lost to South Carolina like LSU and Angel Reese and Fly J and all them I'm like bro listen who you saying she losing to what? she losing to teams she's the only five star the rest of them probably like girls you can see in Iowa we talking about LSU that constantly get ballers they got the number one uh number two player last year right behind Juju she started, then they got another girl from DePaul, then they had uh all these other folks. No, well, I'm talking about this year. Last year, their team was loaded. Right. In South Carolina this year, what do you want her to do? She can only do so much. Right. In the, in the, the championship team. games. In, my in, the <laughs> in the championship game, I'm like, bro, she literally scored 30 in both, 30 plus 30 in both points. of the games. Right. right. 30. What else? And then the bench. And Iowa bench didn't score a single bucket. So right. South Carolina's 35. Right. That is insane. Like, bro, like that is like, come on, bro. That, that is that goes to show Don Staley has like pure class, bro. She's pure class, yeah. man. For her to get out there and not even just boast on, on her team. So well, she did boast on the team, but yeah, to say course. that first and to be like, hey, I want to give her appreciation to Cap. Uh, Caitlin Clark for changing, changing college women college sports like putting more eyes on it. Like right. you hear me? Sure. The right way too. Just right. the, the right, right way. way. The right way. No, n- n- no scandals. No nothing. You know, just just her just playing ball. Right. And yeah, I think Don Staley. Uh, Don Staley. She's gonna be. She's gonna be one of those top. Mount Rushmore court coaches. When it's uh, all said and done, I believe she's up there. I don't believe. And done, yeah. My fault for uh, over talking. No, but uh, when it's all said and done, I don't believe nobody's going to catch uh, Gino. I think Gino got about three, yeah. of, three, three more championships in the bag for him. But the thing is, I believe when it's all said and done, it's going to be Gino, going to be Pat Summit, going to be Don Staley. Mm-hmm. And as much as folks want to give Kim uh, Mulkey a lot of flack, oh, Kim, Mulkey, Kim, Kim Mulkey is a great coach. I don't care yeah. what nobody say. You may not yeah. like her attitude, but that woman right there is a great coach. Yeah. And to, she's the only one of all of them to do it in two different places. Right. And that's saying a lot. I, I say, man, her personality, she's the only person that I think that could coach that LSU team with the personalities that they have on that team. 
Mm-hmm. Like, I don't think it would work with another coach on that team. Not at uh, all. Other than Kim Mulkey. Yeah. Um, but, but, but to your point about Caitlin, man, for her giving, giving her credit of being one of the GOATs, uh, I think you posted it, man. Somebody said some something goofy about yes. all these other, <laughs> about all these other uh, WMA players that why they are great. Don't get me wrong. All right. None of them can relate to doing it from Iowa. I don't care like what who you you go down that list. Maybe share a suit at Texas Tech, but like, and that's you it. Start, you start looking at that list. A lot of them play together. <laughs> like, Connecticut, no Tennessee, yeah, LSU, even USC with, with USC with and uh Cooper. Like to do it at Iowa, man, is a feat that if she would have won that championship, man, you wouldn't have been able to deny. Her. I don't think you can deny her now, man, because when I watch her play, I see one of the best plays I've ever seen play women's college basketball. Right, it's as simple as that. I, I put it like this. She played at UConn. She would, she'll have two national championships at least. Oh, for sure. Oh, yeah. Her and Paige on the same team, they'll, oh. they'll have two national championships without sure. a doubt. You're not handling both of them. For sure. And then, plus, you got more talent. Man, stop it, bro. What she has done there is remarkable. And then she's about to go uh, to the NEA, NEA and Fever and play with Aaliyah Boston. Right. Don't worry, help is on the way. <laughs> help is on the way. Help is on the way, yeah. Aaliyah. Trust me, yeah. help is on the way. And them two going to ball out. I expect a championship out of them in five years or less. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then the crazy thing is about all that, uh, before we move on, like, I just don't like the – we already got enough hate from the people, but the <laughs> people in the WNBA that – yeah, like, that's I understand, kind of like oh, we gonna give her the business or whatnot. But a lot of that just, just like I, I'm, I'm all for that. Like oh yeah, we, we gonna show this rookie, we're gonna let her know like right. she gonna have those moments. But you can just tell like it's a little hate in there a little it's bit. Right. <laughs> it's, a, it's, okay. it's, it's, it's some it ain't even no denying that it's some hate, bro. I'm like bro, yeah. she is growing the game. Like bro, they are moving the. Las Vegas Aces game to a bigger arena because of her, and she ain't right. even been drafted yet. Right, right. that right. is crazy. They right. literally said, "Oh, we're gonna um, instead of they normal plays, we're gonna move it over here." That shows you, like, bro, they that game's gonna be sold out. So, so they're talking about a player that more than likely, I don't know if it's gonna be true, but more than likely. Whatever team she plays against, that game is gonna get more viewers and more people there than than, than they've had in years. Right. Like I, I know Tarazi was one of the biggest haters, and I get it. Tarazi, the old head in the house. Like she is she the oldest player in the WNBA right now? And she might not be the oldest, but she close. Yeah, she's she, she the oldest. She she is she, definitely the oldest right she now. The oldest. Yeah, so I get it. One of my favorite players yeah. ever. And if you know Diana Taurasi, you know she 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 all the way with it. Like nah, I, nah, I, nah, I nah. wasn't surprised to hear her say that. Uh, but, but you can hear a little jealousy in there, just yeah. a little bit. It's well, a little when hate they, when, they yeah, the Fever, be- when they play the Indiana Fever. When they play the Indiana Fever, that's gonna be the most watched game <laughs> that, that 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 Diana Taurasi has probably ever participated in in the WNBA. I, saw, I like, can see it coming. But that's the thing, bro. That that game just just hurt. They should be appreciative because if that's if she can bring more eyes to y'all, guess what? Y'all gonna make more money. More money. <laughs> this is what you want, literally. Think think of it as a win-win. Like I know you want to go out there and kick her ass, and what you're gonna try to do more than likely, you're gonna do it early because y'all more. I believe yeah. just because y'all older or whatnot, but y'all have more experience and all that. Y'all gonna do that, but. Y'all gonna make it's a benefit for y'all. <laughs> it's a big benefit for y'all, and I and I think the reason why I don't think the WNBA is gonna grow in a lot of ways one because the same women that are watching the game now it's not gonna follow the game in the WNBA like men are going to follow it. 
Man, you know what? I'm glad you said that. That's something I want to I want to point out. You said something on the last part I thought about. You was like, uh, we was talking about this, and you said the women have got to stop pushing men away from the game. Mm -hmm. I noticed that during the final four. Now I'm, you know, I'm not saying that this is. I, I just noticed this. There yeah, was true. Absolute, yeah, this is the absolute truth. There is, there was absolutely no zero male yeah. representation yeah. when it comes to commentating the game. Like the entire panel was female. The male perspective on the game was not there at all. Now I'm not right. saying I'm not I'm not sitting here as a man crying for yeah. inclusion in the female game. Oh that's yeah, not man. I, I, I completely didn't we, care. That's not what you're saying, though. That, that's not what I'm saying. But what yeah. I'm saying is, like, it's a double standard in that too, that exists in that too, because they make it a point to make women inclusive in the male game. Like, a point. It is, we've seen some of our favorite commentators get the boot to put a woman up there. And I get it. Um, but if you want, I, in my opinion, this is just me talking, if you want to further the women's game, uh, like Brinsky said last, you, you, can't, you can't push men away from it. Uh, Men watch the women's game. We men buy the jerseys. We saw the Haven with the Cheryl Swoops jerseys. Men are going to these games watching them. Uh, so uh, it, it was just odd to see, and I'm just, I was just thinking, like, man, it, it it never happens like that. Vice versa, like you never, you know. It, I don't know. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to get people upset with me. But it's just something I noticed, man. Oh, no. Nah. See, bro, mm -hmm. I don't even care about that. The one problem I had with that, it was just all UConn people. That is true, too. That was the only thing. And the Boston. Well, I'm talking about up there was, yeah, with yeah with them, but it was just like, bro, it was like hella bias. Like, come on, bro. We we know. Like, especially after that Iowa and UConn game, it was so biased. Yeah, I was, that was the most biased thing yeah. I've seen in a minute. Like, what you expect them to say? Oh, no, that was the right call. Come on, bro. You knew they weren't gonna say that. <laughs> I want even. It is what it is, man. But and the last, shout out, last, go ahead. Last, last thing I wanted to say too, just real quick, man. Stop trying to discredit this girl, bro. Right. Like, hey. like it is corny, bro. Stop trying to. I see people making it seem like she cannot hoop. Like I, I don't think people understand what is going on right now. There are literally graphics comparing her career to LeBron James, bro. Is this what we're doing? Like, if we resorted to that now, like, we don't want to give her credit so much that we want to compare it to one of the greatest male basketball players in the history of the game and compare their resumes. Like, that is not cool, bro. Just give a girl her credit. She can hoop. She's, she lit the world on fire. Now she's going to the WNBA. And what becomes of the women's game after this? I want to see these same people is trying to discredit her. I want to see y'all tuned in to the women's game next year. And I want to hear y'all opinions on it because we losing a great win in the women's college basketball game. We losing must TV, must, must see TV. Now there's some more players out there, but let's see what there's another Clayton Clark out there right now. We'll see. I believe Juju's on her way. Let's see if y'all follow Juju. Let's see if you follow any women's sport. Let's keep these ratings up for these women. I highly doubt it because a lot of them just want like drama of it. But hey, what do I know? But shout out to South Carolina. Shout out to all the women. Shout out to uh, women's sports. I'm just happy to see it grow and continue to grow. And hopefully it grows without the drum. It's just simply just because of basketball. But I wanted to talk about this topic, man. <laughs> I meant to put an apology, but oh well. But my man, J. Cole. My dog, 
My dog, my dog. I ain't gonna even spend too much time on because we talked about it uh before we even got on camera, which is I ain't gonna lie to y'all, man. We have some of the best content <laughs> when we don't even be on camera. <laughs> like some of the best content. And shout out to Arline. I think it was Arline. Or I think it was Arline. Yeah, it was definitely Arline. Arline, like, bro, just push record. It don't even matter if we even put this up there. We had some of the best conversations before we even really, really do the show. But uh, shout out to him. But uh, J. Cole apologizing. We all know Kendra Lamar go off on uh, him and Drake on Like That, one of the songs off Future and Metro Boomin' album. And then J. Cole come back last Friday. Was it last Friday? Yep. So, oh, it ain't even been that long. Jesus. So he drops his uh, mixtape Friday and then has, no, nah, yeah, it drops Friday and had some surprises on there. Had even a little, little jab on there. It was just a small disc, just a small disc. Then before the end of the weekend, my man apologized. Apologizes to Kendra Lamar as an adult. Okay, I understand it, but man, this is rap. Y'all ain't about to go out into the streets and shoot nobody. This is just bar for bar. Let's let's go. That was my problem with it because I I felt like bro, we was gonna get some of the best music. Like we we need the heavyweights, man. The heavyweights go at it, man. We we, we need heavyweights. Big and pop going at it. Jay Z and Nas. Like, come on, bro. We need we need the heavyweights. This 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 is a sport. But I can understand that the man said something about the oh uh, said something about Kendra's wife and kids, and he wanted to apologize. I'm all for it. But I just didn't like the apology. Just, just being. I don't. I, I'm just guessing. I think because of rap, when he the one that started it, <laughs> it ain't like you started it. He started it. But I guess it wasn't in his soul. But I'm, I'm, I'm highly disappointed. I don't care who feels what about that. Yeah, you can't whoop my ass. So <laughs> I'll leave it like that. But um. What's y'all thoughts on the little quick takes about it? But just for the fan, I know how y'all feel about it. <laughs> <laughs> Did that why I said quick takes? Just uh, saying. All right, I so know, okay. I don't care how, what they feel about it. If your feelings is, I just like, bro, this is rap. So if you got a problem with it, deal with it. Yeah, man. I don't know. Like I. I so when Kendrick originally dropped his 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 jab, right? I thought he was just stirring up the pot. Like I didn't think it was like what it was made out to be. Like you know what I'm saying? He didn't say nothing. Like uh, there's been way more disrespectful diss tracks out there before than than what Kendrick said originally. I honestly didn't think Cole was. He didn't come off as a person that cared to get into. A, a back and forth with somebody, so I didn't think he would respond at all. Um, but then he drops his his response, and I don't I don't know in which order they drop. I know I heard the seven minute drill track before I heard the entire project. Um, when I heard the seven minute drill track, I thought it was light. You know what I mean? Uh, as far as from a disc record standpoint, I thought it was like okay. He, I mean, he even said it was a warning shot, so he, he it wasn't like he was like going in i mean i thought he was rapping his ass off because that's what he does i mean the kid can yeah. rap uh then when i heard the project I, it kind of changed for me right because i started listening to these tracks and i started hearing all these little jabs take a little jab here take a little jab there and i was like oh okay now if kendrick responds he's got rap all right so after that i had cold up in this battle. I was like, oh, well, the ball's in Kendrick's court. 
and you can't just now you can't just get on a feature and say a little light bar about the man like you got to rap like you got to rap you, you you've been picking a fight well with drake but you've been picking a fight with people trying to pick a fight for the longest and now finally you have one okay kendrick we want to see you rap now and then this dude apologized and I see people saying a, a lot of different things about why he did it and all that. But it's just like, what did he say that warranted an apology? I just didn't get, I didn't understand. Like, he didn't he didn't say nothing about his family. I mean, there was some comments that he might have said and some more tracks, not the seven-minute drill track, that maybe uh, warranted an apology. I think, I think he alluded to him being trans or something like that on the track. Maybe that alluded to warning an apology, but it's just like, I didn't think y'all was about to fight or nothing like that. Like, this is not, this wasn't, this wasn't Jeezy versus Gucci, man. Where you got a real beef and a whole dead body in between these beefs. <laughs> Where it's like, okay, this could actually get ugly. Uh, I, I thought it was just like, friendly spar and like hey I'm, i can rap better than you here's the, a project of me rapping better than you <laughs> oh i didn't think he needed to apologize to that i don't know why he did it i've been trying to make up reasons none of them really fly um i i, I have no idea to me if you was gonna apologize like a day or two later uh, why even get involved in it like if you didn't want to do it why do it why put it out uh, it's 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 ah it just it just wasn't it wasn't along the lines of what we see when it comes to battles and rap and hip hop and stuff. Um, it was very different. And now I don't know how how you move forward from this, right? Because now you've given Kendrick ammunition. He comes out if he kills it. We don't want to hear a response from J Cole after that. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like. I don't know. I, I don't know if it's believable or not. Like, it's just, I, I don't know. I, I didn't think it was a good look, but, you know, he felt he needed to do it. Uh, maybe maybe he had some more stuff tucked that he was he didn't say that he wanted to say and it put him in a bad place, I guess. I don't know. Right. Uh, but, yeah, it was, it was not a good look, in my opinion. Yeah. What's your thoughts on the coin? I, I feel that, but so it's two two sides right now, man. You got you got people who like seeing the positive uh, outcome out of it. They like, well, you know, he's trying to change it. He's not trying to like be about beef when they could be like doing making some music together, you know, stuff like that. That's why he apologized. Maybe he's going that way. And then you got other people who looking at it like. This ain't the norm for rap, rap beefing. <laughs> like, this ain't the norm. You gonna apologize? Like, bro, are you kidding? Bro, like, go harder. <laughs> like, don't apologize. You out. He, Kendrick started it. You gotta, you gotta finish it. <laughs> like, that's how we looking at it. And I, I, I look at to look at both points. And yeah, I, I, I see it as you know, it's something way different from what we've seen. We've never seen anybody apologize after making a beat, right? His beef wasn't even even hard. It wasn't even hard like like he could have gone. You know, right. we've heard we've heard J Cole with some hard hits, hard music, right? And oh. pause, no Diddy. But uh yeah, no man, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, man, but we seen that, and all I'm saying is like the way he came about it, yeah. I, I wouldn't have gone with the apology, you know, like like nothing nothing was eluding to a a uh altercation, you know, no no kind of fight. No kind of weapons being drawn, nothing like that. And, you know, for you to just apologize for a beef, 
I don't even know what to say. It's just like, you just can't even say that. Like, you, now, now, now you do kind of look at them differently, you know, for those who think on this side. On this side, the positivity, you might think like, okay, well, he's trying to destroy the, uh, the, the mindset of, you know, always being in negative energy. He's trying to destroy the mindset of, well, they both do the same thing. Why can't they work together, you know, instead of just beefing, you know? But beef has been around for a while, for for, for a while. That's what rap is, you Man. know? You know, and so that's all I pretty much got to say on that. Yeah, man. Like, it's, it's so, like, you don't even know how to even explain it, bro. That, I know I said, I totally understand, bro. Like, yeah. It wasn't gonna go to a level like you were gonna be somebody losing their life. I like everybody should know that, bro. It was just like this bar for bar. Let you you think you better than me? Let's go, let's right. go. And I felt like he just took the sport out of it. So that's yeah. why it, it, it's it, not it, his lane. Yeah, I'm sorry, my bad. No, yeah. no, what you say? I said it's not his lane. It's not. So, his lane. No, 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 so no, why no, participate no. then? Exactly. Yeah. And then, but even if he, but he said you, you say you the best, bro. When you, when it doesn't matter. We didn't think Drake uh, can beat Meat Mill, but he beat him. That's not his lane. Like Drake, like, bro, this is rap. If you're in it, you're in it. It doesn't matter. Somebody's going to come at you. Right. And you got to be ready for it. Are you that guy? You should be ready for this. And I don't like, what he did when it comes to this, and why I say it's very mature of him. Me as an adult, I understand. But this is rap. Ain't nobody about to lose their life. That's the only thing that I had a problem with it. And like I said, if anybody say I'm a nobody, cool. I don't know shit, cool. But get what I say to that. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> rap, bro. This is rap. So right. them same people, them same people that's complaining, that's saying, oh, what Cole did was cool. I bet not ever see y'all talk about somebody else's beef again, ever again in life. I'm like, bro, that ain't mature you, bro. That ain't mature. I'm my boy. I'm about to be on some folks' head to pause. I mean, to be honest, regardless, regardless of how people look at it, man, um, I still focus, yeah, so, Jacob. I still, still, but I'm disappointed. Yeah. But I am disappointed. I feel yeah. you, but I, I don't look at his music any different. You know, to be honest, yeah, I, don't no way, not, right? I don't look at his music any different. No, but, no, I don't think nobody looking music. How he approached that situation, you could be like, okay, why you do that? You know, you got you so, raise eyebrow at that point. My my thing about it was like he when he apologized, he made it seem like. To me, this beef was good for hip hop. Like, I didn't think that it was a bad thing. He made it seem like this was a bad thing for hip hop. And so, when, when I hear people say, like, so, uh, you know, taking the positive aspect on it, I didn't think anything about it was negative, so to speak. Was there bad words being said? Yeah. Did they say some things about each other? Yeah. But, but it, these are the two people that can show hip-hop culture that mm -hmm. you can have a beef on wax and we can get back to the days of we just talking you know we having beef on wax it don't have to spill over that like y'all had the power to do that you know that this is unlike the reason why it's such new territory because these days beef and rap ends up with dead rappers <laughs> you know what i mean like they really be talking about killing people on records and really be killing people. So like mm -hmm. this was way different from that. This was like okay, we got two of the best rappers in the game. They going back and forth and there's no animosity for real. They just trying to prove who can rap better. So like I didn't think it was just like such a negative thing. Um, but then like you say, I, I don't think it called no different. He just can't he just can't say I body all y'all again. Like I don't believe that. I believe he's capable. I just don't think he will do it. 
Hey, so, man. Hey, Go ahead. Let, me, let me just ask one question. In the verses, let's say if they did verses again. Cole. J, J. Cole versus Kendrick. Yeah, Cole probably. Cole. I'm going to go. Wow. Yeah. Actually, they should do a versus. Man, I don't want to know. He shouldn't be in no battle, man. He ain't <laughs> no battle right now, man. Ain't no battle. I, anything with Cole and battle better not be in it. I've been not the, here. The verses, they just, well, they just playing they, they music. That's all. It's, it's still it. a battle, man. Already. It's a battle. And now, battle. now if, if Kendrick respond, it's going to be like, man, the man already apologized. What you still at it for? And it's like, nah, man. But if, if J. Cole come back, and make a song say, Psych, nigga. You thought I'm a, you, no. you thought I'm a, <laughs> Boy, I, if, if he do that and he be snapping that one, say, Disregard everything we just said tonight. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Disregard right. everything that we said. That would be some of the most crazy thing. Like, oh, I'm just setting them up for something. Right. Well, right. maybe, maybe I'm getting him to just uh, come at me and say something. And then I just come in, like, No. Nah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. And they'd be like, oh, whoa, whoa. If, if I was a part of his PR team, man, I would, yeah. I'd be like, hey, let's go. Let's it's, go. But it, it would be <laughs> one hell of a trap. Right. <laughs> yeah, that would that, And then, then I'm going to tell you right now, if he do something like that, which I highly doubt he is doing, <laughs> if he's doing something like that, he may have pushed himself into a realm mm-hmm. that he is yeah. – Submitted himself like I am up there with the Nas's, the Jay Z's, the Pop, the Bigs. Like right. is this this is the type of stuff where legends are made, bro. Like matter of fact, this like everybody know what you do in the regular season. What you doing in the playoffs? Right. What you doing when it matters? This is when it matters. Yep. You let yep. folks know that you like you are him. And you are battle tested. That's what he doing. <laughs> he's saying I'm sorry they were saying yeah. something about you that's what he's doing I love I love the man man but that 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 that, that one hurt bro I ain't gonna you, lie to you you think I, Kendrick I, respond now I believe so and so? I, I believe he's the type of but, guy that but in what fashion though in what fashion like he's coming out there like mama mentality I'm trying to kill him like do, I'm trying to let think- him do you think that his response is different after the apology than what he already had planned? Or you think he take it easy or he go harder because of this? Or he just, you know, business as usual? I think Kendra gonna go harder, to be honest. Like, mm-hmm. if, if, if I was on his team, I'd be like, you know, fuck that apology. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like go hard, bro. Right, Same right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you got your foot on somebody, Nick, Go ahead and you like, uh, uh-uh, I'm not even trying to let you breathe. But but another thing too, like sometimes the best response is no response. So that's why Drake. Ain't, that's why Drake ain't said nothing. Drake ain't said yeah. nothing. Yeah, I don't, think, I don't think Drake gonna say something. Oh um, no, nah, Drake. Drake ain't that type. Nah, uh, Drake, I don't think that, you think it's gonna be subliminal, or you think he come out? If, if it does, they've been, uh, they been doing subliminal shots yeah, been like, subliminal. Well, for the longest. Like they've been doing subliminal shots forever. But it's coming. Just remember what I told you. It's coming. I don't think so, man. I don't think so. But the best thing about it, man, is time. We get to see. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, man, the, with the history books we talk about, we talk about the winners, man. We talk about the battles. Who won on the battlefield? That's true. We yeah. ain't talking about. Oh, I sold as many albums and all that. We talking about who, like you went, you had beef with this guy and you destroyed him. Who ended up on who? Matter of fact, they can say whatever they want about Ja Rule, but one thing you, if you associate Fifty and Ja Rule, guess what? They said Fifty destroyed this man's career, and the winners, the winners tell the stories, and the losers just sit there and take it. Do you want to be a winner? Hey, Vaseline, hands down. <laughs> I think <laughs> Ether is the best one. I think Ether is the best one. Ain't nobody topping Nas, bro. Vaseline, boy. Ether is <laughs> the best diss record? Nas, Ether is the best diss record in the history of hip-hop. Uh, By the know. best lyricists ever. It was yeah. cold, now. It was cold. 
It was cold. But them early, them early, them early, early 90 this is different. Right. You got they, they shot a video to Dre Day. Right. We don't even talk about that as a diss record. Right. Easy uh a real uh come to city G's top tier. Good. Top tier. And it wasn't even none of the best lyrical. It was just like, bro, like how funny it was, and like time and time is like everything when it comes to that. When it's beef, bro. That's what I said. No Vaseline, bro. No Vaseline. Oh yeah, no, no, no. Q went off now, Q but I went skipped off. I think that's number two. Like, like Jay Z takeover was like a death wish for Nas. Like he was like, no, nah, I own this. Like I'm killing you, and then Nas just came back. And then that basically like, damn, bro, now nah, taking these L, taking his L, but he ain't saying nothing. Then he came with that, and then it was just like, I ain't got to say nothing else. So, so I always say that a fight is not won by the strongest, but the person that's willing to go the furthest. Right. That's what I think about when I think about Ether. Mm-hmm. So Jay-Z was saying, like, your career is trash, this, your albums, such and such. Nas came out was like, bro, you ugly. <laughs> it's just a whole different vibe from mm-hmm. this record. That's what made it so it, it just came out of left field. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, we talk about animals, bro, bro. You look like JJ Evans. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I rock hoes, y'all rock fellas. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. It my was nigga said, good. Queen nigga, my nigga said, Queen niggas run you niggas ass, Russell Simmons. Oh, that was and Russell Simmons is Dev Jam, and yeah. he's where he's from. He's from Queens, and that oh, means he God. own you. R O C. He was mocking them, bro. He said, Let me get he's Biggie, you know, you're Biggie, he's Puppy. <laughs> I like, bro, this man would just stab him, bro. Yep. But all that to say, don't apologize, folks. No, <laughs> if you're a rapper, do not apologize. It didn't work, but Jay Z did it. No, no, no. But the thing is, you apologize. You don't apologize now. You don't do it now, right? You don't do it now. You gotta later on down the line. It's like grown man stuff. Like, yeah, man, I apologize. Ain't nobody gonna trip off that. But mm, not, no, not right now. <laughs> you don't do it right now. But hey, like I said, folks gonna say we immature. Or whatnot, but guess what? Like I said, I don't give a f. I don't care what you think. I love this rap music. <laughs> I love hip hop. This is this is the sport, bro. Right. Cut out all that soft stuff. If you don't, and guess what? If you don't want to be in here, get out the kitchen. Get out. Sit at the kids' <laughs> table. This bit boy, <laughs> this is the brain right here. Man, it, but, it was it's just disappointing because I I'm telling you, I was. When I heard that, I heard that project. I'm like, man, he is geared up for battle, bro. I I never heard Cole take this approach. It's usually like some social commentary on there. And then, nah, he came straight out the gate, just choosing violence. I was like, if this is what this battle is gonna be, it's gonna be amazing. And then he came out in front of a crowd of people and was like, "Y'all rock with Kendrick Lamar. Just make some." <laughs> Bro, I can't. I I don't know what he said. I just heard the apology. I heard a little bit of the apology, and I was disappointed. So if he said anything like that, I'll just like I don't need to know, bro. It was cringe. It, all that was just cringe. I can't take it. It's all good. But uh, press to all parties involved. Shout out to Cole. Shout out to Kendrick. Shout out to uh Drake. More. They, they rich though. I don't really care. They they rich. Oh, and compared to them. We're we we're, we're like we're on welfare. <laughs> so, yep, yep. so so to end the pod, um, uh, of course we're gonna shout out everybody on the pod, and we're gonna start with yeah. What's happening? Another episode, man. Appreciate you for having me again. Uh, can't think of nothing creative to say this time, but know where to find me at. Right here. <laughs> yeah, like you point this wall. <laughs> listen, listen, this is much harder than it look. I don't, anybody at home try that because you know, it's reversed. But anyway, yeah, another good episode, man. Every week, find us here. We Boom. give an opinions.
Talking our trash. All day. And as you know, man, it's QG, the GQ from 46 Tuskegee. Uh, follow me on all socials, QG underscore sophisticated, man. Shout out to the host, Brinsky, for having me again and again and again. Skybox is waiting for you. The <laughs> Skybox! <laughs> we going to be up there one day. I'm telling you, when you see everybody in the Skybox, I'm telling you. I'm, and we got the Haven uh, in Atlanta. You might, uh, need with to catch me quick, you might need to catch me quick, man, because it might be some big, big, big plans in the future, in the near future. So just, just holler at me. Let that person I heard say that won two back to back national championship. Hey, 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 I'm uh, Brinsky Sharp with the Sharpshooters Podcast. Uh, we drop every Wednesday. Uh, appreciate all the guys, uh, Tez and Quint. Shout out to Arline. Shout out to the Haven. They couldn't make it on tonight. Hopefully, they'll be on this week. Uh, we're getting close to the uh, NFL draft. I'm, I really don't know how I'm going to do. That may be the live stream week. All right. I'm really thinking about that just to see or how I'm lining it up with the draft. I don't know. I have no idea. But appreciate everybody and everything. Keep on supporting the pod, the channel, and all that. Keep subscribing. Keep watching the videos. Appreciate y'all. Shout out to uh, my wife. Shout out to my baby, uh, Justice. Thank God she sleep. But, um, uh, as always, y'all already know. F Auburn and Roll Damn Time. And oh, hold on. I ain't even going to end it like that. Tuskegee got some goddamn lights, ladies and gentlemen. Tuskegee <laughs> University got some goddamn lights, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to end it just like that. Hey, Tuskegee. We got some lights. Thank you, Jesus. We may have some lights doing homecoming. I hope it's a night game. All black. I'm already speaking it up. So you already know. Hey, Tuskegee, shout out to the four six. We 